Hello and welcome to another tutorial from PH Studios. Uh, I'm going through and redoing the ones that were way out of sync and I couldn't fix that. So in this tutorial this is the input system. I We covered in the previous tutorials the keyboard movement and gamepad movement. So in this tutorial we're going to combine the two into a nice input system. So last tutorial we discussed gamepad movement. Let's go ahead and look at that for a brief overview. Basically we just had a gamepad state and we updated the position to the gamepad state object by just getting the state of the player index and then we just moved the player position by the left joystick and multiplying that by speed since it's between 0 and 1 if you move it up or 0 to 1 if you move it right since it's in the X and negative 1 to 0 since you move it in the to the left since it's X and likewise with the Y the value is arranged between 0 and 1 when you move the joystick up and 0 to negative 1 if you move it down so that's why we multiply by speed then if we press the A button we just center the texture and we check our balance to make sure we do not go out of the game window so now if we press F5 to run this as you can see we have our sprite and I can't really demonstrate that I'm using the gamepad but I have it in my hand and I'm moving it up down left right diagonal complete circle and press button A and it's back to the center so that's the last tutorial now let's worry about uh, combining those uh, both gamepad and keyboard into one simple class so let's make a new project it's going to be an XNA Game Studio 3.1 Windows Game 3.1 and let's call it Input System Tutorial it doesn't matter where you save to just remember where you saved it to and once that's generated we need our sprite back so if you go into the gamepad movement or the keyboard movement and if you go to the bin or not the bin but the gamepad movement the content let's go ahead and drag our player.png into the content portion right here just click and drag and it will be in our game and we are ready to go so now if we go back and look at our class for the gamepad movement let's just open that up in this solution uh, the game, the first gamepad.cs one I have highlighted is gamepad movement the next one is for the input system so let's go ahead and change that one go to the game1.cs the second one or if you just go to the input system tutorials in the solution explorer right click game one click rename and just rename it to something different input game yes alright so now they are two different names so that way you won't get confused so we have a position a texture and a speed so let's go ahead and duplicate that vector two position above that we need a texture 2d called texture and below the position let's have a float speed okay so inside the initialize let's initialize the position is equal to center texture as the uh, texture and then click the little rectangle underneath the C and generate method stub now let's do return new vector2 this time we need to center the texture so we do the same thing as we did in gamewood.cs as you see in the initialize or actually it will be in log content but we can simply move that 
So if we just center the texture, we take the viewport depth width divided by 2 and subtract the texture width divided by 2. So we just want to center the texture in both the X and Y. So graphics device, capital G, capital D, dot viewport, dot width, divide by 2. Those are all a, uh, enclosing parentheses. So we have opening parentheses, opening parentheses, graphics device, all that stuff, closing parentheses minus opening parentheses texture dot width divide by two closing parentheses comma enter opening parentheses graphics device dot viewport dot height divide by two closing parentheses minus opening parentheses texture dot height divide by 2 closing parentheses closing parentheses semicolon and that needs to be in the uh, low content so copy all that cut it paste it inside the low content and above that let's have a texture is equal to content dot load it's a texture 2d object and the asset name is player okay and the reason that needs to be in the low content is because it initializes called first and then we load the content and of course we cannot load the center of the texture when texture is null so that's why we do it that way now speed is equal to 10 just like the previous sample and if you want to keep things nice and formatted just cut this center texture and paste it below the low content and let's make a little summary centers the texture in the game window the texture you want to center and it returns the center location Okay, so that's what that method does. Now what we need to do is a way to update that position. And in the past we have done the dedicated gamepad state or keyboard state. And this time we're going to use the input system. On the unload content, let's set texture is equal to null. Okay. So now right click the input system input system tutorial go to add oh, you can't really see that let me move it over right click the input system tutorial go to add new item it's going to be a visual C sharp it's going to be a class file or you can just do the right click add class instead of just add new item and going through this but either way Let's add an input system. Okay, now let's move this back. Alright, so check the namespaces. They should be equal since we're not in a different uh, sub folder or sub project, so they should be equal. Make that a public class so we can easily manipulate stuff in there and let's have a region called fields and region inside this fields you determine what you want to use if you want to use just the keyboard just have a keyboard state you need to add using Microsoft .framework.input. and it's a good idea to use a previous state and current now if you wish to add gamepad just do the same thing gamepad state previous g state current g state g stands for gamepad and if you want to keep it consistent